Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, today is a little bit of a tutorial for some CSGO Steam Workshop stuff that people keep asking me. Um, I uploaded this USP skin to the workshop um, two or three days ago, and people keep sending me messages on Reddit, uh, Steam, and keep asking me how I made these, these two screenshots in particular, these renders of the skins. Um, it's actually really simple. It's a lot more straightforward than it, than it, than it might seem. Um, so basically, all you need is an application called Adobe Dimension. Uh, you can get this from Adobe for, I think, £9 a month. Um, or you can get it by other means. I'm not going to endorse that kind of shit, but you can if you want to. And basically, all it is is a 3D rendering software. And it's absolutely brilliant. So, a quick, I'm going to just show you how to do the CSGO skin side of things. I'm going to show you the basics of how I made those screenshots in particular. And, and then you can kind of play around with it and figure it out from there kind of like I did um, so when you first open Adobe Dimension you're gonna have this like canvas up here and you can click on the canvas by clicking the numbers up here clicking here doesn't work you click on the numbers and you get to select the canvas and down here you can change the size so I'm gonna change it to 2k resolution so 2560 by 1440 and I'm gonna change the pixel resolution to 300 pixels per inch you don't have to do that bit but I do just because I know it, it just looks nicer and then we've got this 16 by 9 which is the Steam Workshop. I export it in 2K and then play around with it in Photoshop afterwards and then upload it to the Workshop in 1080. Um, so we get this. And then when you make a CSGO skin, um, you can download from uh, Valve directly all of the OBJ files for the skins. Um, and basically these are 3D models of of the weapons in game. So obviously this skin is for the USP, so we're gonna grab the USPS OBJ and just drag it in. If if that if that worked. Okay, I think I don't oh no. Drag it in. There we go. No, I spawn here. And then we zoom in on it, and now I've got this USP. So the good thing that I found about the USP skin, uh but the USP model in in particular is that the uh the gun and the silencer are two separate entities, so you can actually move them around like this and stuff. Um, I'm not going to do that for now, because they're all grouped together into this USPS folder. So we're going to just make a single gun. So the one I made was, I laid it down. You can use all these controls and hold down shifts to get stuff like that. And you can position the gun however you want. And then, to put your skin on it. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky. Well, it's not tricky, you've just got to know what buttons to click. It's fairly straightforward. Um, but if we go into our Iced USP, and we have the texture file, you want to save your texture as a PNG, ideally. Um, and then you want to go to your uh, your object. You want to select a specific object. You've got to do it twice for the USP, because there's two different objects. Then you go into it. Then you click on this default material under it. And then there's this button here. It lets you import a file. So you import the PNG you have. It'll import it and then it'll just kind of stick it on the gun like this. You want to change this placement from decal to fill. And it's that simple. Um, I'll show you because this looks really glossy and shiny, which is okay because it's a custom paint job. But I want it to look, because when I when I make skins, I turn the fog intensity down quite a bit. So I want it to be kind of like a matte, not too glossy. So I put the roughness up to like 70 or so percent and I put the metallic up a little bit as well. Because it is on a metal gun, you want it to look a little bit shiny and a little bit metallic. And then we do, ex it's exactly the same steps with the suppressor, you just click on the default material, upload the exact same texture, change it from decal to fill, play around with your metallic and roughness and stuff, then you can position this however you want, use right click to rotate, middle click to pan, scroll, and then left click is to move objects and stuff. Um, what I did as well on some of them, because um, Adobe Dimension can render light paths and reflections and loads of stuff like that. And there's loads of things to play with. If you scroll down the left hand side, you'll get what's called a plane. If you place a plane like this, that place two for some reason. If we just stretch it so that it goes under the gun like this. And now we've got this, this ground behind it. This will render shadows on it. But if you then scroll down, you've got all of these materials is the standard adobe ones you can get more online you can buy them from adobe you can buy them from other places and there are some free ones as well 
but what I've used on my workshop is I've used this uh, this rainbow one here, which looks a bit crap now, but when I uh, check the environment, the light is so the light looks fine down here. Um, if we then go to the render, we just look at a test render. You see, it's re it's reflected the skin onto the onto the work surface. It's such a powerful program. It's got the the textures from the other side of the gun and everything just reflected perfectly. Shadows, everything sorted. Um, then you just go to the render tab up here. You choose where you want it to render. Give it a file name. And um, if you've got an Adobe Cloud subscription, you can uh, render it on the cloud, so it renders on their servers and doesn't use your PC's power. Um, but you've also got these three options here. You got low, which is a, just like a low quality render for like testing stuff. You click render, it's fairly quick, and you can just look at it. Medium is kind of it's in the middle. It's it's not amazing, but it's not a bad render. And then your high power high, high render is um, like production quality, end of the run kind of. But it, it does take like on my PC as well. It takes like nine or ten minutes to do a full render, especially with all the reflections and stuff. Um, just do smack render. Ah, test render already exists. Um, change it to tutorial render. Then click render. And then you'll see this estimating time in the bottom right. It's kind of behind my face. There we go. And it will start rendering. You can scroll around and look. It looks a bit fuzzy at first, but that's because it's doing all like the, the tracing of the lights and stuff. And I'm assuming it'll take probably about eight, eight or so minutes. Um, you can say on watch this if you want. It does take quite a lot of, of your PC's umph to do this, so it might, it might, you know, make everything else on your PC slow for a bit. But what I will do is I will let this render, and I will I will come back when it's finished and show you the final product. Right, guys, so we're back. Um, basically, it took about ten minutes total to render. It didn't take too long. Um, one thing I forgot to mention before I hit render is you have these two export formats. So you can export it to PNG, which flattens the image completely and gives you just uh, an image file to work with. Or you can save it as what I do, which is a PSD, and you can choose between 16 and 32 bits. Um, 16 is fine, doesn't really change much. Then we'll go to Photoshop, you can file, open, and then we can find our tutorial render that we just made. And here it is. You have all this stuff, which is like your additional layers, you don't really need that. But then you have your rendered image with and without noise, or with noise and with reduced noise. And you can just kind of play around with it. You can touch stuff if something isn't right, spot heal some stuff. Um, but yeah, that's about that's about it. That's that's literally all it is. Um, you render out these images. Obviously, you can you can play around, do anything. Like I made this by putting in two guns and splitting the suppressor and the gun apart, tilting some stuff, making it look like it was it was balanced on its edge, and all this kind of stuff. And it's just it's it's a really really powerful tool. Really straightforward. Really easy to use. And uh, yeah. So if you guys like the skin I used in game, there is a link to it down there. If you want to go and uh, want to go and give it an upvote, support it. It's 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 actually not too bad. I don't dislike it. it ha it's going to have some updates. It's going to have some work done to it in, in the future. I, I might do some more stuff to the pistol grip because um, there isn't much there at the moment. Um, but yeah, it is. It's on the workshop. This link will be in the description if you want to go and uh, want to go and check it out. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you learned something. And uh, I look forward to seeing all the cool screenshots and skins that you make using Dimension. Um, yeah, see you later.